exotic jungles, tropical hideaways, and pirates! From Atlantic to Pacific, which Disney Adventureland is more terrific? Oh, that's awful. Who wrote that? Hey everybody, it's Chris for AllEars.net. Today it's time for another Bicoastal East versus West Coast Showdown. This time in Adventureland. Disneyland versus Magic Kingdom. As always, the results of this showdown come straight from AllEars.net readers and social media followers. Adventureland is all about exotic adventure through the lens of the 1950s, when it was originally built. But it looks a bit different on both coasts, and our readers and cast members have some pretty big feels about which land is the best. For the sake of this competition, we are breaking down Adventureland into three categories, theming, food, and attractions. First up, Disneyland. Disneyland's Adventureland is inspired by the jungles of Africa and Asia, and it was originally based on Walt Disney's True Life Adventure series of documentary films. Walt Disney wanted it to look like a remote jungle far from civilization, which means he also wanted real African animals for a jungle river ride. When zoologists informed Walt that real animals probably wouldn't be cooperative enough for a ride like that, not to mention the enormous expense, Imagineers built mechanical animals for what eventually became Jungle Cruise. The land was expanded in 1995 when Indiana Jones Adventure opened, and the land is set in a 1930s time period. So it's a little bit hard to talk about Disneyland versus Disney World's Adventureland. Um, because you're not going to have all the same rides. Pirates in Disneyland is better, but it's not in Adventureland. However, Disneyland's Adventureland does have Indiana Jones, and that is a major point in its favor. It also, mm, Bengal barbecue is really good, so Disneyland has that going for it as well. In Disneyland's Adventureland, quick service is pretty much all you get. There are no table service restaurants, so you're stuck with fast food unless you want to venture outside the jungle. You can grab meat skewers at Bengal Barbecue, Dole Whip from the Tiki Juice Bar, snacks from Tropical Imports, and Bao Bun dishes from the Tropical Hideaway. You know what Disneyland has? The original Enchanted Tiki Room, where you can get a Dole Whip and go sit in the tiki room and eat it. It also has the Enchanted Hideaway, which is like a big patio near the Jungle Cruise where there's all different kinds of crazy Dole Whip concoctions and actual tiki birds there. And you can sit there and have a treat. But the real shining star in Adventureland is a little stand called the Bengal Barbecue. Ooh, I'm getting excited just thinking. It's a meat skewer stand. They sell like six different kinds of meat on a stick. According to All Ears readers, the average score for all four Disneyland attractions is 7.87. When it comes to Disneyland attractions, you basically get two rides, a show, and an interactive attraction, including Jungle Cruise, Indiana Jones Adventure, Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, and Tarzan's Treehouse. So what are the big differences, and which park does Adventureland better? The big difference is the Indiana Jones ride, which I am jealous of with every single fiber of my being uh, because I really like dinosaur. And I, I don't know if you know this, but I have no connection to the movie Dinosaur, which is what the dinosaur ride currently intertwines with. I do, however, have a connection to Indiana Jones. So I feel like they have the same ride system, right? So I feel like I would like the Indiana Jones ride. Are you with me? Are you with me? But Disneyland's Adventureland is a little bit smaller than Magic Kingdom, so there's not quite as much to do in the land alone. Because things like pirates and stuff like that are over in Critter Country. That's not where Pirates is. Pirates is in New Orleans Square. Listen, they could be in Critter Country if they wanted to be. Winnie the Pooh and the Pirates hanging out. It could it could happen. Jungle Cruise is a simulated riverboat cruise through a variety of Asian, African, and South American scenes, and it was considered the star attraction of the original Disneyland Adventureland. It opened on the same day as Disneyland, and it's undergone many changes throughout the following decades, including a major overhaul of the storyline and scenes in 2021. 
Your cruise is guided by a cast member who really, really, really loves puns. Something like, um... <clears throat> Do you know the difference between the crocodiles and the alligators? Uh, the crocodiles are made of plastic and the alligators are made with fiberglass. You're laughing, right? Okay. It, it, well, it really works when you're in the moment on the water. Anyway, in Disneyland, the cast members actually fire a gun to warn the hippos. And there's also a scene with piranhas that you don't see in Magic Kingdom. And I'd love me some piranhas. So is that enough to put Disneyland ahead of Disney World? There are some key differences between Disney World and Disneyland with the Jungle Cruise. It was an opening day attraction at both parks, but it is different because mostly because of size. Disneyland is smaller and their Jungle Cruise is smaller. Um, it's very fun, it's the same concept as Disney World. The one thing that they have that Disney World doesn't that always sticks out to me is the piranhas, but they're missing the entire temple section that you go through in the Magic Kingdom. There's never the temple moment where you go through with the tiger and the snakes and stuff. They have some of that on the water bank, but that whole addition, not at Disneyland, but piranhas are. Indiana Jones Adventure was not part of the original Adventureland, as it was added in 1995 following the popularity of the Indiana Jones stunt show spectacular in Disney World. Indiana Jones is an enhanced motion vehicle dark ride based on the popular Indiana Jones film franchise. It is known for its incredibly immersive queue, and if you've ever ridden Dinosaur in Disney World, it's a similar kind of ride experience. Anonymous said, the ride system is amazing and the special effects are really awesome. One of the best rides of all the Disney parks combined. What it really adds to Adventureland is a very unique ride experience. That is a e-ticket attraction that is still super popular many years after it first debuted. So this is a big ticket item for you to find in Adventureland and Disneyland. Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room opened in 1963, and it's a classic Disney show featuring singing birds. It was actually the first attraction to feature groundbreaking audio animatronic technology. At this show, you experience over 150 singing, talking, and dancing birds, along with flowers, tiki drummers, and tiki totem poles, after which you struggle for the next couple of hours trying to get rid of the signature song, the Tiki 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 Room, out of your head which is normally only possible via a ride on It's a Small World. Now, a major perk of Disneyland's Tiki Room is that you can actually get Dole Whip from within the waiting area of the ride. And it also has a different pre-show than Magic Kingdom. Reviewer Mickey Nutt said, take a moment, get some air conditioning and enjoy the show that was the first attraction to feature audio animatronics. It seems odd, but there were no audio animatronics in a Disney park until 1963 when Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room opened. But this was the very first. Other parks have copies, but this is the original. Fun for the whole family. The pros. Disneyland is the first Disney park, and knowing Walt Disney actually walked down that main street and visited Adventureland there, that's heartwarming. Indiana Jones is an incredible ride that adds to the land and it adds to the appeal of the land. As the birthplace of Disney audio animatronic technology, this is the place to go to see Disney history. The cons? There's only quick service in Disneyland's Adventureland, so you're not going to find a sit-down meal. Disneyland is smaller than Magic Kingdom, so it makes sense that the land is smaller too, but it also means it can't expand to the extent that Magic Kingdom has. There's just less to do. There's only one interactive experience in Tarzan's Treehouse, which is not accessible to everyone, and there's only fast food and three other attractions. Before we jet to the East Coast, head over to All Ears Socials on Facebook and Instagram for more Disney World throwdowns and allears.net to leave your reviews for everything Disney Parks related, hotels, restaurants, rides, and more. It's up to you to change this list right now by leaving your own review, and who knows, your opinion may be the tiebreaker in a future episode. Also, don't forget us on TikTok, where you can see Quincy do something like this. Next up, Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom's Adventureland is bigger than Disneyland, so in addition to the same jungle and Polynesian theming, it has added elements of Middle Eastern and Caribbean themes with the Arabian Village and Caribbean Plaza. Overall, it has a similar 1930s explorer and adventure atmosphere. 
impeccable. I was a bunch of chef's kisses, if that was unclear. The theming in Disney World Adventureland is awesome. You walk over there and the plants, the plants tell you. They're like, it's about to get adventurous, kid. Because they're all spiky or like plants I've never seen. They're very cool plants over in Adventureland. But you walk in and all you're seeing is spiky cool plants and skulls. There are so many skulls in Adventureland. You ever counted the number of skulls in Adventureland? There are like dozens of skulls. And, I, and humans, they're human skulls. Human skulls in Adventureland. Really all that's standing out to me is the skulls and the plants in Disney World's Adventureland. Does Disneyland's Adventureland have that many skulls? That's something we should look into. There are three spots to grab quick service in Magic Kingdom's Adventureland, including Aloha Isle for Dole Whip, Sunshine Tree Terrace for floats and ice cream, and Tortuga Tavern for a quick burger or hot dog. If you want a table service restaurant, Skipper Canteen serves really unique tropical cuisine, and it is seriously worth a visit. Skipper Canteen's for sure your best place to eat if you want like actual food. Cause like Tortuga Tavern, their menu varies. They're usually closed, but when it is open, it often does like a turkey leg and a hot dog, which not for me. Skipper Canteen is very fun. It's Jungle Cruise themed. It has a lot of really good Easter eggs in the building. Um, and the food is good. It's a little more adventurous than some people might enjoy, but I really like the secret menu cheese bread that's on there. Um, they have a pretty good steak. They've got some good noodle dishes, great soups. Um, so Skipper Canteen is probably not only the best thing to eat in Adventureland, but possibly one of the best things, definitely the best sit down restaurant, like food wise at the Magic Kingdom. But I still think Bengal barbecue wins. I don't know, I would take meat sticks over coconut Dole Whip, I think. I don't know. This is a very hard question. In Magic Kingdom, Adventureland is a lot bigger with added rides like the Magic Carpets of Aladdin, which maybe kinda sorta fits the overall theme, sorta as well as classic rides including Jungle Cruise, Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, and Pirates of the Caribbean. According to our readers, the average score for all five Disney World attractions is 7.32. Magic Kingdom's Jungle Cruise opened in 1971, and it's mostly the same, but there are some differences. Disney World's Jungle Cruise is slightly longer than the Disneyland version with the addition of the Cambodian Temple Tunnel. And it also has a more impressive version of Schweitzer Falls, which is the home of, come on, say it with me. Do I love the Jungle Cruise pun? Absolutely. This formation on the right is actually sandstone. Most people take it for granted. You can't beat a rock pun. Not just the rock pun. It was the rock making rock puns. Did he do that one in the movie? Reviewer Molly's Twin said, Up Close Encounter with the Eighth Wonder of the World, The Backside of Water. A boat ride down the rivers of the world with a skipper filled with dad jokes and energy. And the only con is that Dwayne Johnson wasn't the skipper. Unlike how Pirates of the Caribbean is based in New Orleans Square in Disneyland, in Disney World, it adds a Caribbean theming element to Adventureland. It's widely considered the lesser Pirates of the two Disney parks, as it's both shorter than Disneyland's version and only has one drop. When you think adventure, there's like a few movie types you think of, and like Adventureland really covers up, and Pirates is certainly one of those movie types you think of. There's a lot of skulls near Pirates, there are, you go back around the side of the Pirates building, ton of skulls. You look up, ton of skulls. So I I also, hey, I really like Pirates um, a lot. When I was in elementary school, I had a crush on a boy because he had one gold hoop, like a pirate. That was my one qualification for a crush. I was like, pirate earring. All right, that's a true story. Anonymous said, not as good of a ride if you've been on the one in Disneyland. The Enchanted Tiki Room in Magic Kingdom is a bit shorter and more edited than Disneyland's version. It's changed a few times over the years, including the Enchanted Tiki Room under new management with the addition of Iago from Aladdin and Zazu from The Lion King. That version was widely considered a disaster and didn't last very long. And of course, the Iago audio animatronic catching fire in 2011 helped the decision to return the attraction to its original format. 
the pros. With more space, there's extra room for more rides and food options. There's both quick service and table service, so you can likely find something that fits your mood. The addition of the Caribbean Plaza and Arabian Village are fun additions to the whole vibe of Adventureland. The cons? There's no Indiana Jones equivalent, and do we really need an Aladdin version of Dumbo? The Arabian Village placed across from Caribbean Plaza is a little weird. Just because there's more doesn't mean it's an improvement on Adventureland. Before we reveal the winner, give us a like and click on that thumbs up. If you haven't yet, click on that subscribe button. And when you subscribe, be sure you ding that little notification bell so you immediately get notified anytime All Ears posts a new video. And if you really want to be part of the fun, be sure to follow us on social media at All Ears Net. Got it? Good? On we go. So when it comes to Adventureland, Disneyland and Disney World both have a lot to offer. Like Tomorrowland, Disney World's Adventureland is bigger and has more food, but Disneyland has Indiana Jones Adventure. According to our readers and social media followers, the winner of the Adventureland debate is Disneyland. And there it is, smashing the bigger is better theory. Okay, you can start your comment war now. This is Chris for AllEars.net. See you next time. Are you with me? Ooh, ooh. Start to get adventurous, kid.